East Shade's main premise is that it's an open world game devoid of violence. Instead of a hard and dangerous world filled with bandits and warring factions to influence, the small island of East Shade is a bohemian paradise filled with artists, musicians, poets, and almost painfully polite and cheerful country farmers. Ripping out one of the genre's core gameplay loops is a bold plan, but East Shade fills the void by leaning heavily on the open world's other foundational building block, exploration. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm going to tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today we're painting the landscape in East Shade. Exploration is everything in this game. I mean, sure, the game's main advertised twist is that you're not a sellsword or adventurer, but in fact a painter. And so you would think that the game's core gameplay pillar would be painting. But no, 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 put that aside for a second. While yes, you in fact do a fair amount of that, the actual act of painting itself is pretty cut and dry. Just slap your easel down, crop your screen to what you want to capture, hit a button, and your masterpiece magically compiles right next to you. Instead, the real game is in finding what you're supposed to be painting. The tutorial area starts simple enough with straightforward assignments. Get these buildings at X place, paint this thing from this angle, and so on. But commissions quickly start turning into treasure hunts, ranging from vague requests such as one woman who wants you to find the one owl that exists somewhere out in the wilderness, to more esoteric requests like one to capture a quote-unquote portrait of despair. And before you can even put paint to canvas, you'll also have to go exploring for both materials and inspiration. The materials you mostly scrounge up yourself by digging through random strangers' houses, then slap together in a basic crafting system, and inspiration is a pool of points that builds every time you read a book, discover a new location, or come across something interesting. I'm of two minds as to how well this system works. On the one hand, these limiting factors force you to pick and choose what you want to paint, especially in the beginning. More than once I wanted to stop and paint something, but had to remind myself that I already didn't have enough canvases to fulfill all my current requests, much less indulge in my personal whims. If you're a screenshot junkie that hits print screen every five feet, you'll probably be a little disappointed by this. But on the other hand, these systems make thorough exploration of the environment a mechanical imperative, and exploration is where the game truly shines. In other words, these mechanical systems force you to find the real fun, and in that sense, they're an absolute success. Because East Shade's best moments don't stem from the endless tide of fetch quests or the painting mechanic, but just the random stuff you stumble upon in the world. The street musician that you can stop and listen to, the first time you come face to face with your own commissioned artwork hung up on someone else's wall, the random couple just chilling together wordlessly while the sun sets, the puzzle that suddenly drops you down a pit for a face to face meeting with its creator. Little moments like these are the experiences that make East Shade memorable. By far the coolest thing I've found in this game is the tarnished teapot. A tavern in the big city which puts up a series of posters around the town every day announcing a live story reading or musical performance. And lo and behold, if you actually go there at the listed time, there's actually a little 10 minute performance you can sit down and listen to. And if that doesn't sell what East Shade is all about, I don't know what does. The developers have been pretty adamant that despite the breadcrumb trail of fetch quests and painting assignments, this game strives to reward the player for looking off the beaten path of their quest journal. And those rewards are when the game is at its most whimsical and entertaining. Whimsical is a good word to describe the game's environments as well. They're filled with pink forests, bustling marketplaces, and red fern coated national parks. And while they may not have the bleeding edge fidelity you might find in a AAA game, East Shade's environments are built for effect. The composition of each region in the game is handcrafted to regularly induce awe and fascination and punches above its weight class. Which is something East Shade does in general. It's a shockingly broad and well-developed game coming from such a small studio. And I've spent a lot of time singing its praises, but its ambition reaches further still and even exceeds its grasp at points. And as with almost any game made by a small indie team with lofty ambition, that means there are a lot of kinks in the experience. There was never anything game-breaking that outright ruined the experience, but the framerate loves to hitch for a second every once in a while, and you'll run into all manner of tiny bugs. 
Fans of Skyrim will find this game familiar in a lot of ways, not all of which are always flattering. The game also has the admirable ambition to be fully voiced, but here again, the application is a little uneven, and for every fantastic bit of dialogue, there are questionable deliveries plagued by everything from awkwardly forced accents to just plain bad audio editing. This is gonna be such a great prank! Uh, don't forget to meet me in Nava. I'm usually near the bakery. But while East Shade might be a little uneven at times, my opinion of it is not. So let's get to asking, what do you get out of five hours with East Shade? I've managed to cover about half the island in that time. And the more East Shade has opened up, the better the game has gotten over time. I wouldn't say I've gotten the full East Shade experience yet, because it just keeps getting better and better the deeper in I get, but I have seen a lot of enjoyable side quests their completion, and would say that I've had a pretty fulfilling time with this one already. Despite not having a sword or RPG level up system in sight, East Shade still very closely emulates games like the Elder Scrolls series at its best and worst. Its highest moments are the ones where you stumble upon a side quest or conversation that just blows you away, but then you'll constantly run into little geometry glitches, clambering over rocks, and all kinds of other quirky bugs. But either way, it's impressive that this tiny little indie studio could produce so close an experience to what all the King's men over at big AAA Bethesda seem capable of mustering, even if it's smaller in scope. If you're a fan of exploration-based video games, this one's a must-see. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this first five review. If you did, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're looking for games that value your time and don't pad themselves, I'm your guy. And be sure to check out some of my other reviews or some longer form content while you're here. But regardless, thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.